Roadies. Thank you for stopping by. And um, I have been plotting all kinds of things for myself. And I actually am getting better at... I'm, I have a little bit of control of the inner squirrel. So if you're looking for a channel that is organized, if you're new here, that's organized and is going to help you with your issues, change the channel. <laughs> change the channel. Because for those of you who have been here a while, you know that this is an ongoing process for this quilter. Yes, ongoing. I pretty much like everything but paper piecing. And really, I love the way paper piecing looks. I just can't wrap my brain around it. And so I'm constantly wasting too much fabric and I just, yeah. So what have I been up to? Well, I've been trying to organize myself. So one of the things that I have been doing is um, making, you know, kind of like when you're on a road trip and you look at the map and you make pit stops along the way that are going to satisfy some desire or need that you have. That's what I've created in my house. So what I did was I got two baskets, you know, round baskets. And I uh, filled one with hexes that are already folded on the paper and just need to be stitched together and I have a pair of scissors and the thread and the needle and glasses in that basket and that is sitting downstairs in the family room. And then I have another basket that is filled with my primitive wool stitching and these baskets are only, they're like a fruit basket size. Uh, with a current project that I want to be um, done with and I have that in a basket so that when I go to different rooms in my house I am confronted with a project. It's so easy for me to when I step out of the beehive to um, close the door and get on to other things. But this way I am having different it's it's kind of like that <laughs> what was that movie that was on speed dating where you got five minutes with a with a person you're interested in and you got to talk and then that's it. You get up and move on to the next chair or table. Yeah. It's like speed dating with my projects. And so I have decided to kind of scatter those baskets around the house with all the things I would need to stitch on that particular project. Because the bottom line for me is 80% or more of my projects are handwork. I just am drawn to it. It's not that I don't like piecing on a machine. I mean, that's my whole history. But um, I think handwork is like a therapy for me. I'm not sure it's cheaper than therapy, but it is like a therapy for me. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, I have been very proactive about getting the projects done that I need to get done this month. I mean like this week because I have um, 
family events, um, birthdays, graduations, all kinds of things going on. And this is my year that I'm totally committed to um, handmade projects. That's I, I'm trying to stick to that. So I have um, I feel I feel good if you know what I mean. I feel good if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I was never a singer. Okay. I apologize for anybody who's new. This is not going to turn into a song and dance. Well, it might be a stitching song and dance, but that's about it. I have to show you something that just blew my mind away. I got some mail, and it was um, from a couple that are virtual friends. And... So she sent me this absolutely adorable pattern. And if you look back um, to last year, I, I made a hat pin cushion. And, but she sent this one, which is absolutely adorable. Isn't that cute? I can't wait to make that. I can't wait to make that. It's a Cottonwood Creations. Snowman Hat Pin Keep. So cute. Absolutely so cute. I have to be careful though because I can easily be distracted into um, uh, another um, squirrel event or a lab puppy event or Anna event which, you know, yeah, it's what it is. So I have um, been busy, but busy with the things that need to be done. But before we go on to that, I'm going to show you this card her husband made. John. I... I I actually squealed and I am going to frame it. You know, I did the video on the framed postcards. Oh my gosh, this is like, I was so tickled and how talented John is. I will put his email, well maybe I should ask. I'll find out if I can put his email in in the description box before I do it. Yeah, he may not want to, but this is called uh, um, Grandfather Cards, and he makes these cards, and and like the inside is left blank like I would ever write in it and send it to anybody. No way, no way. I am taking it to the framer and I am getting it framed and it is hanging up on the wall because look at this postcard. Can you believe that? It is absolutely beautiful. Just beautiful. I I just Thank you so much, John and Jean. Thank you. Thank you. I absolutely love it. I am going to get a frame, and it's going to be hanging on my wall. <laughs> I mean, really, it's so clever. The design is so creative. I can't wait to do that. But I know framing takes a while now, too, because I um, have another project that I'm framing, and it's taking a while. You know, you got to get the frame and whatever. Um, so I'm going to be stitching. I have the last side of the quilt that I'm facing, and I really want to um, support you in your mistakes <laughs> because 
<laughs> we all make them. I should have watched my own video on facing a quilt because um, as soon as I sewed the first side on, my brain was like doing this, what the heck, what the heck, what the heck? And I realized I sewed it on the wrong side. <laughs> so be sure you go back and look at the video I'm facing or find a book that has facing in it. So I had to rip one whole facing border off. But just so you know what facing is, if this is your first time here, it's where you finish off the edge of the quilt without a binding. So that means that you're not going to add another element to your quilt. And for some quilts, facing is absolutely the perfect way to go. So on this particular one, I am just about done. And this was a quilt I made a few years ago um, at Quilter's Affair. I took a crazy log cabin class with Jackie Erickson at um, the Stitch and Post and um, made these blocks up. I had never sewn with solids, and so I decided to make my crazy wonky log cabins with solids. And then the problem came is that I didn't buy enough of the background fabric to make a, a traditional binding. Um, I didn't think about it. And so the, there came that issue of how do you find the right without dis right fabric without distracting from it. So there's a block, a crazy wonky block, and then the facing is where you are stitching the back over without having to add another element like the binding. So that's what I only have one side to do to tack down. I've tacked down the other three. And I'm not quite sure why, but it seems like tacking down facing is faster than tacking down binding. It makes no sense. I have no idea why, but that's uh, what I've noticed anyway. And then the other quilt that is going to be leaving my possession is one I did with the Fat Quarter Shop a few years ago. And I, um, it's a, you know, it, it screams Lori Holt, but I um, wish I could show it to you all, but I'm not tall enough nor backed up enough from the camera. But it, isn't, isn't it pretty? It's so bright and wonderful. Yeah. Um, I made those blocks at a fabric stalker retreat. <laughs> that was that was such a great memory, that retreat. And isn't that what quilts do? A lot of them hold a hold a a piece of us in them or a memory in them. Yeah. I did want to do just a short review of my Sweet 16 because I was asked by someone uh, one of our virtual friends here um, to give just a little review um, of the Sweet 16. So since I'm sitting on this side of the table and uh, when I bought this Sweet 16 I came with um, a breadth of knowledge in terms of that I had quilted on my standard machine. I used to own a long arm, a 12 foot long arm, and then I went to a Sweet 16. So why did I decide on the Sweet 16? Well, for a couple of reasons. The when you're quilting large quilts on your standard sewing machine, and it can be done, there's no two ways about it, 
uh, it's a lot more work though and it takes a lot more strength and uh, forethought on where you're at and where you're going and so there's no reason that one can't quilt a quilt on a standard sewing machine. Uh, it just takes some more planning and it's what you want to do. With a long arm machine, back in the day when I owned one, it was a lot more work to attach a quilt to it. Because in the beginning, in the beginning, there was fabric. No. Um, <laughs> um, you had to pin. You pinned um, very closely together your backing fabric. You sewed your batting down and then you pinned your top and then you rolled it and you kind of kept it taut. So the prepping of the quilt on the long arm was a little bit more labor intensive. It was easier than layering a quilt to quilt on your standard sewing machine because when you would layer a large quilt to quilt on your regular sewing machine you would have to take those bull nose clips or tape or whatever to secure down the backing, put the batting, secure down the top and you were either on your knees pinning and you would go fifth, uh, fist width apart with the safety pins or um, you would bull nose clip it to a large table and you would again uh, do fist width apart with safety pins all over the quilt. So as you're quilting you're removing the pins uh, the safety pins so that you don't break a needle on your sewing machine. And that worked great. I did many quilts that way. But I got older. And it was harder on your back to kneel on the floor to pin or to lean over a table. And subsequently with the, the long arm it was physically more challenging for me and my back to be leaning and pinning. That, but there again, time has brought new products. And I watched a long arm clip, uh, quilter clip a quilt on and it took her less than 10 minutes because now they use these clips that just clip it onto the machine. It's like fabulous. The other consideration though is space. If you have the space It's a, it's a great option, especially now when you can just clip a quilt really quickly. And I have uh, two friends in my fabric stocker uh, group, both have long arms, and um, they love quilting on them. So there's a lot to consider there. They are expensive, but there are different names and uh, models. Some you don't even have to be in the room to quilt. You can program it uh, with a computer and I have no judgment about that. You know, to me, uh, however one wants to finish one's quilt, I'm not a quilt snob, I guess. I'm not a quilt snob. So whatever um, gets a quilt done and puts it back out in the world, I think is awesome. So, um, yeah, that doesn't matter to me. It's kind of like having an Instapot to cook your food <laughs> rather than standing over the stove. I'm not judging. So why did I go to the Sweet 16? Well, um, we actually in one home added a room on in which the long arm fit perfectly. But then in the next move, there wasn't uh, a room to hold the long arm, nor any space to add, you know, a shed or whatever onto the garage, nothing like that. So I sold the long arm. 
but that house also didn't really have a space for my uh, for the sweet 16 it just it was configured differently and as we as G and I realized because we've moved so much is that each time we move we learned something from the last move something that was important or not important and so in the move just before this one I had the space for a long arm. So I got another long arm. And what I found out though is that that long arm dominates the space. And I wasn't using it like I thought I would. Because by that time I had transitioned to more handwork. And at one point, I was quilting for other people, but I found out really quickly that that wasn't for me. For two reasons, really. Well, yeah, for two reasons. I am not the kind of quilter that everything pours out of their head onto the quilt. I am not a visionary quilter. And there are people who that is a gift. And I did not have that. I'm okay with not. You know, I don't, I don't need someone to tell me, oh, but you're so talented. No, you, there's just something that some people have. It's kind of like those fabulous cooks that can take, you know, a tomato and, and serve a five-course meal or something. You know, I... I um, didn't have that. And so what would happen for me is that I would load a person's quilt and it would stay loaded for a week without me ever stitching on it because I would come back and I'd ponder what I wanted to do and then I would go and I would say, oh, maybe that's not right. Maybe I'll, you know, the process was so exhausting for me because I couldn't you know when you're quilting someone else's quilt it's a big responsibility and I so am amazed like my friend Graham over in the UK when he posts quilts of customers that he's done I'm like that is a totally different set of skills and talent that is not going to be me. So to make money at quilting was not in my future. So do I keep a you know long arm quilt quilt machine for the few quilts that I'm going to do was didn't make sense, but I I still like the process of quilting some of my quilts. Now, I am realistic, realistic enough to know that if I have worked on a hand-stitched quilt top, that I'm not going to quilt it. I am going to send it to a long-arm person who has talent to make that quilt absolutely stunning because I've put hours of hand stitching into it. On the other hand, there are some quilts that I feel comfortable quilting, or table runners, or baby quilts, and I enjoy that process, and I enjoy that practice. So why the Sweet 16? Why not my domestic machine? It's the way it's facing. There is something very um, easy in quilting when the machine faces this way. And it has such a large opening that you can, I could quilt if I wanted a king size quilt in here without any problem.
And the table I bought, it was a horn table, I believe that's what this is, that came with it, is big. I mean, when we moved here, I thought my stove, my cast iron stove, was going to be the heaviest thing to move. Those movers said that stove was nothing compared to these tables. But what I like about this Sweet 16 is it's facing me. And so the visual of when I quilt is amazing. The table is huge. So there is no drag on the shoulders and the neck. You know, it has a lot of space to, um, to have things. I mean, I even have my bobbin winder. You know, there's just a lot of space. So I can even sit here and in this corner do my hexes. Um, you know, I, I, ha I use this table for not just this. So why did I choose the HQ Sweet 16 as opposed to one of the other ones? It's all about choice. It's all about how much money you want to invest, how many programs you think you need or want, um, so what can you afford, what do you see in your future. Um, yeah, it's just that's where it comes down to individual and you have to decide what is going to work for you. Um, so that's why, that's my little Sweet 16 spiel. Um, I love it. I enjoy it. Um, when I lived on the other side of the mountain, uh, I'd have a girlfriend come over and she'd quilt her quilts on it. You know, so it's, uh, it's, you know, it's the one for me. It kind of met the price point and what I was looking for in uh, a quilting machine. And I still have a lot of quilts in my future. And I, um, as you know from that rack on the other side, there's still several to be quilted by me. Yeah. So there it is. That's the Sweet Sixteen spiel. Put my glasses on. Get my needle and thread. And we're going to stitch this down. I use my little red clips, binding clips, for the facing also. So I'm gonna So the weather um, is still that spring kind of weather, so there's there is um, sunshine and rain and sunshine and rain. We're still um, working on being fully opened, so that's um, that's a that's a challenge. But you know, people are getting out, um, doing a lot of walking and biking. neighbor is up kayaking and um, on the, in the San Juan Islands and um, brings back so many good memories, you know, because my family kept a, um, took a sailboat up there every year. Beautiful, beautiful country. So after I get this last um, binding tack down, then it's label time. 
And the way I do labels is I, um, I have lots of label fabric, you know. In fact, I, wherever I see label fabric, I tend to buy a half a yard or so because I like different, you know, different ones. And then I choose the label I want and I um, put a little bit of soft fuse on the back so that I fuse it down. Well, actually what I do is I, first I write on it with, um, you know, one of those micron pens, what I want to say and who it's made by. And then um, I put enough of the soft fuse on so that I can fold it in so that it's all finished off the edge. And then I fuse it to where I want it to stay. And then I whip stitch it down. Yeah. So I have two labels to make. It shouldn't take me too long. I'm so excited. I am so excited that the quilt show is a go. The Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show is an absolute go. It's going to be different, but oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm excited about that. So I will be... Um, Although the Quilters Affair part of it is uh, on Zoom, the show itself will be. And um, so I'll be doing four Zoom sit and sews and working on a different project each day, talking about how I do each project. And then we're just going to sit and sew our brains out. Yeah. I can't wait to meet some of you at FICA. And um, I'll be camping um, there. I get to meet up with my Fabric Stalker quilt group during that week. It's just going to be one of those awesome, awesome weeks. And my um, college roommate and her, her and my friend are going to be having their own little quilt retreat um, in between Sisters and Redmond. So I get to go stitch with them one day. I'm just, and then um, hopefully I'll get to see the Berries group, which is um, uh, the quilt group I am part of. And sisters, I haven't seen anybody there this whole, since last year. I believe it was since last year. Yeah. So it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic July. So what are you guys working on? You know, I just, I love the, I love the comments. You know, when I read the comments that you leave, I feel like there's a conversation going on. Yeah, it's uh, fun for me in that way. Um, and I loved, uh, I, I am going to follow up on the advice of that maybe the swoon block is not a retreat project. <laughs> I, you know, there was this little voice in the back of my head that was saying that, but 
the the voice that I tend to listen to is Kawabanga, and so I loved hearing excuse me the voice of reason uh, and and that one of you suggested I make I cut out and make one whole block and oh it just I you know when I don't <laughs> when I try to just power through and not really listen I uh, tend to make mistakes and it was so great. All the advice and the support was so awesome. got quiet, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah, when I went to pick up my grandson um, yesterday, because I pick him up, you know, on when, um, one day a week, well, two days a week, but so when I went to pick him up yesterday, I um, was astounded because I usually leave, it only takes me about less than 15 minutes to get to his house, but I usually leave <clears throat> after 9 because the rush hour traffic, rush hour traffic is over with. I was shocked. Yesterday there was bumper to bumper traffic. And it made me think that things are opening up and people are on the move again because I'd never seen so much traffic in months at that time. And I read on social media that Sally Fry and her friend her partner are selling their shop in Ferndale and on the one hand I was kind of sad about it because that is a, a fabulous shop and the workshops that they put on it's a beautiful town I mean back when I was younger you know in my 20s I always wished I could um, you know, uh, live in Ferndale. But I totally understood why, you know, they wanted more grandchildren time. Oh, I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, hopefully someone will be excited about being a quilt shop owner and keep that shop going. I don't know why it's faster to stitch a facing down. Maybe because it's so flat. <clears throat> Maybe it's because it's so flat. Yeah. But it just seems to like it just seems so easy compared to binding. Maybe because in binding you're going through a tight little layer. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming by. Thank you for stopping by. And if you hung out any uh, past the first babbling, I appreciate it. Um, I find that it's um, relaxing to talk to you. 
it kind of makes me a little more calm and then I get more done. How about you? Huh? I hope we see you next time. I hope you like and subscribe um, and that you take a take a moment sometimes and go through the comments because you might have a better answer to questions than I do or you might have comments or there's people just commenting looking for some support. Yeah, so you know, take your time, enjoy yourself, get a cup of tea, get some stitching, and really think about making those um, stitching venues throughout your house in a cute little basket so that you're faced with all your projects no matter where you go. I have kept, I have not put a stitching basket in my bathrooms, but that is a thought. Hmm. Something to think about, huh? You guys take care and thank you. See you down the road. Bye.